Hello everyone, Adrian here. So um, today I'm going to be doing another absinthe review. I do want to quickly apologize for my absence, so to speak. So what happened is that I ended up actually getting really, really sick with a really nasty stomach bug like twice in the span of a week. And then I kind of got piled on with some extra hours and stuff at work because um, some other people had called out sick and it was just a really messy situation but thankfully things are beginning to chill out um, again thankfully I did not get sick with uh, the sickness you know the the pandemic thing it was just a gross little stomach bug I promise I got tested both were negative for that <laughs> So there is one little thing I would love to talk about really quickly before I get into my absinthe review. And that is that um, my husband and I went to, I can't believe I'm actually saying this. We went to Seattle last night for a fun little night out. A couple weeks ago, or maybe like a week and a half ago, I was invited to this show in Seattle called Bohemia. And I actually uh, got a program from the show last night. Eee! I'm definitely going to be keeping this around because not only is this image gorgeous, but I just want a memento of the evening. It was great. So I went to this show called Bohemia and it is created by Mark Ciano. And he actually contacted me like a week and a half or two weeks ago and said, hey, you know, I would really love it if you could attend this show. Um, you know, you have a lot of influence or a fair bit of influence in the absinthe community and I would love it if you could be there. And so I graciously said, yes, absolutely, I would love to come. So I went with my husband and my voice teacher and her significant other to this event in Seattle at the Triple Door. And it was amazing. It was like a combination of musical theater and burlesque. It was fun. It was sexy. It was visually just so captivating. I had such an amazing time. It was so fun. And just to give you an idea that this show is top-notch quality, it is sponsored by Jade Liqueurs and Lucid, which, you know, are kind of basically just one and the same company. So the fact that it is sponsored by Jade Liqueurs really tells you that this is pretty top-notch quality. My only real objection is that they did give little tiny itty bitty bits of misinformation in the beginning of the show to kind of uh, set up the plot, so to speak. But that was basically my only objection. Everything else otherwise was wonderful and I had an amazing time. My husband, who, you know, is quite the critic, uh, also said that he had an amazing time with it as well. So if you guys are in the Seattle area and you are able to get to the show before the 30th of January, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. So if you're a fan of Absinthe, if you are a fan of the Bella Book era just in general, if you love Chopin, if you love uh, the, the work of Dvorak, if you just want to go for a really good time um, and see something that is musical theater and... Uh, burlesque put together. I highly recommend it. Like it's so good that I even like got goosebumps and had tears in my eyes in the beginning. So seriously, this is a really fun time. You guys seriously need to go. And just a little tip, I highly recommend that you get the ferry service during intermission. Get it. You will not be disappointed. So with that out of the way, I would love to transition into my absinthe review for today. Yee! So exciting. It's really, really, really nice to be back. Like, I seriously missed being able to make content for the past couple of weeks, and I've just seriously been overworked. Totally not kidding here. Um, before yesterday, or before last night, I did not wear makeup for like two weeks because I was so tired and busy and could not be bothered, just to give you guys an idea. So the absinthe we are going to be reviewing today is Duple Balance, and this was generously sent to me by my friend John, who is in the absinthe community as well. Uh, this is among um, the many samples that he did send to me, so again, I'm so grateful and thankful for him 
uh, doing that. I really, really appreciate it. It's such an amazing way to try different varieties of absinthe, and I'm so glad that everyone who has sent me samples has been so generous in doing so. So, I'm just going to pull up the description here of Duple Balance. Here we go. Duple Balance is the third and last in the Duple series. This classic verte is very price worthy and excellently balanced. Guess the name. <laughs> Duh. The basis is the same as the other Duple's. Uh, basically Velt and Blanche, which I have reviewed in the past. I will link those down below if you guys are interested. And also I will be linking everything in regard to uh, Bohemia in the description below as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The basis is the same as the other Duplays, which is the Velt and Blanche, a formula from the well-known book of P. Duple from the 19th century, which was slightly adjusted. Meaningless to mention that we use the same high quality herbs that we use for the other Duple products. Worth mentioning is the pale green tint, which is absolutely fantastic. The aroma really opens up when adding ice cold water. The delicate fragrance is spread around the room immediately. No sugar or any artificials are used, as they shouldn't be. Looking at you, Absente. Clean up your act. And then <laughs> just a little bit of uh, tasting notes here. Old green with golden reflections, initial aromas of alpine herbs with anise and fennel, more obvious. Slow forming louche produced thick green, greenish milky fluid with tints of blue and amber. In addition of the cold water released strong aromatics, similar to initial nose, but building it to a more dramatic climax. Fine, well-made product. Okay, cool. So it sounds like this really isn't anything too terribly different from what I expect from the other uh, Duple absinths. So as you guys will remember, um, it is the Lion Spirits company that makes Duple's um, absinths. So like this one, the uh, Blanche and the Verte. So um, I do also want to say to Marcus Lion, who was kind enough to send me not only the uh, Duple absinthe, but also a sample of Preban absinthe. Thank you so much. Again, it's still in my collection. No one's allowed to touch it, especially not without my supervision. Um, it's a very treasured piece in my absinthe collection, and it actually was the inspiration for one of the eyeshadow shades in my absinthe eyeshadow collection, so that just tells you how special it is. And then it looks like the alcohol content for this one is going to be 60%. So this this will be interesting. I'm really, really excited to see how this goes. So now at this point, we are going to reposition the camera and take a look at the appearance and the louche, and then evaluate the aroma, the um, flavor, and the mouthfeel, and give our final thoughts. So stay tuned for all that. All right, everyone, so now comes the point we are going to evaluate the appearance and the louche, and then we will move on to evaluating the aroma and the flavor and the mouthfeel, and then uh, kind of give our final thoughts there. All right, let's take a look at Duple Balance and see what we've got. Ooh, immediately I am hit with this amazing kind of like wintry freshness. Oh my god. Or I shouldn't necessarily say like wintry, but definitely like really kind of pine tree like. And that's something that I tend to notice with really high quality absence that they will have a really lovely kind of alpine freshness to them. And this is definitely no exception. So the appearance of it is really lovely. It's kind of like a dark golden olive. Um, it's a little bit too golden um, for my personal preference, but that's just me, of course. Uh, really pretty, really vibrant color, crystal clear, correct, really beautiful. So for the appearance, I am definitely going to give it four and a half stars because it follows and looks like it follows traditional standards. So there's that. And I have my trusty absinthe fountain here, chocked full of ice cold water. 
I don't think it, it could possibly be any cooler than this. So let's go ahead and begin the process of the luge and see how it goes. The luge is a little slow in forming, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, but ideally we do want a luge that happens right away. Okay, there it is. It's starting to material ugh, materialize, if I can fucking talk, and take shape. Ooh, man, that, like, alpine freshness is really, really expanding and blossoming there. Like, it's really kind of taking over the other botanicals. It smells wonderful. It's definitely a little bit more of like a pale golden color than it is a green, but again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, that is just really, really blossoming. That's really lovely. I will say as far as the louche is concerned, I was a little bit more impressed by the louche of Duple Velt than I am with this one. But again, you know, absence will be a little different, of course. All right, so thick opalescent louche with tones of gold and tiny little flourishes of blue. Um, definitely more on the gold side than it is on the green side. So I will give the louche four stars because it was an immediate like high quality louche. Uh, but it's not quite as as green toned as I would like. And considering how the product started off with a really like really deep golden color with a hint of olive it's not too surprising that it would kind of end up like this so yes um for um appearance i will give it four stars and for the louche i will definitely give it four stars actually my apologies i did say four and a half before <laughs> so for louche definitely four stars all right, I am going to once again reposition the camera and we are going to evaluate the aroma as well as the flavor in the mouthfeel and give our final thoughts. All right, everyone. So now we're going to take a look at the aroma and the flavor of Duple Balance. So yeah, like I said, it's a little bit more on like the pale golden side than it is green, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes you'll just have absence that color-wise will just lean more toward gold, but that's totally fine. Um, I would only ever get really, really worried if it was like really obviously <laughs> artificially colored or if it was just like really, 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 really pale. Ugh. Yeah, in those two situations, I would be worried about its quality. Again, looking at you, Absente. Clean up your act. Not that they're going to listen to me, of course. They'll do what they want because it makes them money. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the aroma of Duple Balance. Ooh, interesting. It has like a kind of a nutty sort of note in there. Yeah, it's a, it's a little nutty. So you have a little bit of kind of, like you, you have the, the alpine kind of freshness kind of like whacking you in the face. I'm really not detecting that much anise or fennel. But I'm really getting that alpine freshness with a little bit of nuttiness. I wonder what that is. Like, is it like... A species of wormwood? Is it some other spice that I'm not aware of? Yeah, like that's the best way I can describe this is just like alpine-like and nutty. The wormwood is coming through just a little bit now that I'm taking like really deep whiffs of it. <laughs> 
and I'm getting the anise and the fennel, but it's it, it's almost like the, the alpine freshness is kind of acting as a barrier for the anise and the fennel, so that's really, really interesting. So I would say for aroma, it smells traditionally correct, which is a really good thing. Um, I would say probably give it four stars because it is... Um, in terms of aroma, it's very similar to the proper structure that we would want um, aroma-wise for a traditional absinthe. So, aroma definitely four stars. All right, so let's go ahead and evaluate the flavor. So, as always, guys, salta and please drink responsibly. That is really different. That is really, really different. I'm definitely getting a little bit more anise, but again, it's that kind of like alpine freshness that's really prominent in the flavor profile. And that nuttiness, it's really, really throwing me off. I really don't know what that nuttiness is, but it's... It's almost woody, but like I said, it's just n nutty. Does that make sense? Like it, it's really nutty. It's like sticking my, my nose in like a jar of like, I don't know, pecans or something. That's what that reminds me of. That's what that nutty flavor reminds me of. That fennel is coming through a little bit more. The anise is coming through just a little bit more, but I really, really had to swish it around in order to taste it. So I will say that whatever that alpine-y kind of like freshness is, it's really overpowering and I'm having a difficult time kind of pinpointing and detecting the traditional herbs used to make absinthe or the holy trinity. So it's definitely interesting. It's definitely really nice and fresh. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's sweet. Like it has a little bit of natural sweetness, but it's not like as sweet as some other absinthe that I have had in the past. It's like there's like peppermint and then something else that is cutting in and giving that kind of nutty flavor, that nutty note. Hey babe, yeah. are you interested in giving this a little try and seeing if I'm crazy? My husband is coming to help um, evaluate this for me. Yes, I'm wondering if you're interested in um, taking a little taste of this. It's not so much sweet, but I'm really getting a lot of like pine tree like freshness and nuttiness from it. Not so much anise. Mm. Like it, it kind of smells like sticking my nose in a jar of pecans. Like you're really not getting that much anise from it, are you? No, no, I'm not. And trust me, Kenny doesn't like anise, so the fact that he's not tasting it, like if he's, if there's not much anise, or if there is anise, or like a significant amount of anise, he would taste it. Yeah. Uh... And you're getting that nuttiness too, right? I'm not quite getting a nuttiness. But kind of like pine tree, like freshness, kind of like rosemary a little bit. I could see pine. But... Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm not getting too much of um, that licorice flavor. Uh-huh. Uh, which means that this is something I would drink. So even though it's not that sweet, you would still drink this? Yeah, I'd drink that just because it doesn't have as strong a licorice flavor. Okay. So. Well, thank you very much for your input, love. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're the best. Love you. Love you, too. So there you have it. It's really not that forward on the anise, and it's really not that sweet. So if you have someone who has a bit less of a sweet tooth, I think they will enjoy this a little bit more. And especially if they have a particular aversion to anything anise flavored or forward on the anise, I should say. So it's good. I'm enjoying it. I'm just saying that um, whatever that freshness or kind of pininess is coming from, it's really overpowering the other botanicals. So I will say that I definitely enjoyed the other duple 
absinthe a lot more than I did this one. It's not bad. It's definitely not bad. I really want to emphasize that it's really not horrible by any means. However, I just enjoyed the other uh, duple absinthe more than this. So it's definitely not bad. So if you have a, a bit of an aversion to um, anything like really heavy on the anise and you want something kind of a little more fresh and you don't have as much of a sweet tooth, then I would recommend this one. So for flavor, I'm going to go ahead and give it um, four stars. Uh, because it definitely feels traditional. It's really nice and fresh. It's really pleasant. It's just that it's um, kind of lacking in the botanicals that you would typically associate with absinthe. Now, as for the mouthfeel, the mouthfeel is actually really, really nice. It's really smooth. Um, again, for the record, this is 60% uh, alcohol, so uh, it's a little bit on kind of like the mid-range sort of zone for strength. So it goes down really smoothly. Um, my husband very obviously didn't cough when he took a sip of it, so that's a really good sign of how smooth it is. Uh, goes down really easily, uh, really coats the mouth really nicely. I'm getting a little bit more sweetness as I'm getting closer to the bottom of the glass. I wonder what that's all about like sweet fennel or something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really not getting as much of the uh, traditional like Holy Trinity flavor profile, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. It's really nice and fresh. Like I said, it really has that going for it, but I'm really not getting as much of the Holy Trinity, which is really important to me. So for mouthfeel, I'm going to go ahead and give that four and a half stars because the mouthfeel is still really, really nice in spite of everything else. So I would say this is a pretty solid absinthe and it is really good for people who may have an aversion to uh, anything that's really forward on the anise and if they don't have as much of a sweet tooth. So I would definitely recommend that for recommend this for someone who kind of fits that criteria. And if you just want to complete your collection of the duple absence, then sure, go for it. Why not? All right, so going through the scoring one last time. So for appearance, I gave it four, four to four and a half stars. I, I can't remember what I initially said, but I'll just say that just to be fair. And then for louche, I will give it four stars. For aroma, I will give it four stars. Flavor, four stars because it's definitely like traditional and correct. And then for mouthfeel, I will give it four and a half stars. So overall, really good absinthe. It just doesn't quite um, display the holy trinity of absinthe very well, but it's still really, really good. So would I drink this again? Absolutely. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And please don't forget to go into the description below and check out all of the links that I have for the Bohemia show in Seattle. You guys will not be disappointed if you go to see it. And please, if you do end up going, get the ferry service. It is really, really cool. I highly recommend it. And again, a big thank you to Mark Ciano for inviting me to the show. Um, you were amazing in the show. You have a beautiful voice. I was really impressed by your performance and of course all the other performers that were involved in the production as well. So thank you guys again for having me. I really appreciate it. And then one last thing before I go, I have recently partnered with Verb Products for hair care because I am going to be switching back to that as my regular regimen. So I do have an affiliate link in the description below where you can get 10% off and um, I get a small commission from that as well. So if you want to continue to support this channel and in turn get great hair, um, go ahead and do that. If you do click it, cool. If not, I understand. Don't worry about it. No judgment here. <laughs> Thank you so much everyone for watching. I really, really appreciate you. And thanks again for bearing with me through my absinthe. <laughs> nice Freudian slip there, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you so much for bearing with me through my absence. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Nice job, Adrian. Nice job. And um, it, was, it was pretty rough, but thankfully I got through it. And, you know, you work hard, you play hard, 
and that's definitely what happened this weekend. <laughs> I'm really glad that I was able to get out and have fun. And to my patrons, thank you again for your support every single month. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. I can't do what I do without you guys. And to everyone, you're amazing. I love you, and I will see you guys later. Bye! Mm -hmm.